My life used to be all about being popular and seeing what I could get for myself. This year, that's all changed, especially because I decided to follow Jesus. Learning about Jesus made me realize God has a plan for me. He loves me, and that's changed my life. Not everyone understands why I follow Jesus, though. Especially not Millie. I totally don't understand, Kylie. Everybody knows those stories in the Bible aren't real. No, they're, they're real, all of them. Noah, the whole earth floods for 40 days and then the water just magically disappears. Actually, it says it took about 200 days for the water to go away. God even sent a big wind to help dry it up. Okay, know-it-all. You asked. Here's your Milli Vanilli. Nobody takes these stories seriously, Kai. But Mason, <laughs> what does Mason know? The other day in history class, he couldn't remember what year the War of 1812 happened in. 1812. It's in the name. I guess. Besides, can't anyone just make up a story? I mean, what proof do you have that these things in the Bible actually happened? Uh, I... Uh, exactly. So anyways, I got Employee of the Month at Sunbound. Since my post about the quiche got over 200,000 views. And BD. Okay, that's... neat. Why are you here then? I just like to remember my humble roots every once in a while. But if that's how you feel, I guess Millie. I'll go. Millie. Bye. Hey, Mason. Do you ever wonder if the Bible stories are true? What? Of, of course they're true. I don't doubt what God says. Oh, yeah, of course. I should never doubt or have any other questions either. Um, that's no problem. As it turns out, doubt was a problem. And not just for me, but for Mason, too. Hi, Mr. K. Good afternoon, Kylie. My, that looks like quite the research project. Uh, yeah, I just have a couple questions about the Bible and God and stuff. I want to make sure I'm not doubting him. Well, that sounds interesting. Are you finding what you're looking for? I think so. Well, I'm happy to help however I can. <laughs> Thanks. Multitudinous mangroves, a drive through order. Be right there. Isn't your mom a pastor? Shouldn't you know this? Of course I do. All right, then tell me. You can't see God. You can't hear God. So how do you even know God's real? I, I mean, look, look at his sunset. It's beautiful, right? So you're saying that's God? No, I'm saying that God must have made it. Because it's pretty? Yeah. Right. Look, I know science. I know how light works. It hits particles in the air, scatters around, and makes colors. Well, what about things that aren't scientific? Like hope? Love? <laughs> well, I mean, that's just... Well, those aren't real either. I mean, I can't touch them. You don't think hope is real? Anyways, I'm probably not wanted here. No, Millie, you're always welcome here. Mm, I doubt that. Bye. You know, Mason, I've been reading about the Bible and God and stuff. If you wanted to read some of this, maybe we could talk about it. No, I don't doubt God. I never have, I never will. Well, fine then. But if you, like, wanted to talk... I think I can handle it, Mason. Okay, good. I told Mason I was fine. I told myself I was fine. But every day, Millie had more questions. And every day, they bothered me a little more. Who made God? Can God really do anything? Why doesn't God fix all of our problems then? God can't really be everywhere, right? The worst part was, no matter how much I read, I didn't have all the answers. Over the next few days, I started to worry. And maybe even to doubt what I knew about God. So, I came up with a new plan. Okay, yeah, that ought to do it. 
Now introducing the Doubt Detector 9000. <laughs> Taylor helped me repurpose a basic AVA device. This thing should find any doubts that you have, and then I will program it to give us the answers. Really? Mm-hmm. Mason, do you want to try? <laughs> it won't work. I don't doubt, remember? Oh, come on. Look, I'll try it. <clears throat> Two doubts detected. Where did God come from? Who made him? <laughs> That's easy. Really? Yeah. God has always existed. How does that work? Why are you asking me? I, I don't like this thing, Kai. But we have to know. Come on, you try it. Fine, but it's not gonna work. I don't doubt. 16 doubts detected. Doubt number Stop one. Stop it! This thing is worse than Millie's questions. I, I thought you said it was gonna give us our answers too. Well, I haven't programmed that part yet. I have to know the answers first. Just wait then. In a couple of years, we'll have all the answers and then we can tell everybody. Yeah. When we're older, absolutely everything makes sense. Right, Mr. Kirby? Hmm. Can I try the device? Oh, yeah, of course. Three doubts detected. Analyzing. No way. Mr. K, you have doubts, but but you're a you're a grown up. True. But from the moment I started following God, I've had questions. Some were answered, some probably never will be. Wait, so am I never gonna have this all figured out? But how will I know that the Bible is true? Or that God is there? Or that Jesus did all of those things? I'm not allowed to follow Jesus if I have doubts. How do we, how do we stop this? <sighs> Can I tell you both a story? <sighs> sure. It's about a man in the Bible, a man who knew Jesus, a man who doubted. This is Thomas. He's a disciple of Jesus. He had been traveling with Jesus for years, but then Jesus died. Shh! We don't talk about Jesus. We could get into trouble. At that time, life was a little scary for Jesus' followers. They were all in hiding. Jesus was killed only days ago. They're still trying to capture anyone who followed him. I have to stay hidden. Still, Thomas met with some of Jesus' other followers. Then suddenly... Thomas! Jesus just showed up! He's alive! He met with us! And you missed it! Yeah, right, Peter. Why are you trying to trick me like this? It's kind of mean. Thomas, it's real! Jesus is alive! I can't believe that. I won't believe that. Why? I saw him die, Peter. People don't just come back to life unless I can touch where the nails went into his hands and where that spear went into his side, I will not believe. <sighs> so, Thomas, one of Jesus' own disciples, had doubts about him coming back to life? He did. And then what happened? Well, about a week later, the disciples were meeting again. You have to believe me, we saw Jesus. Nope, no chance. I still haven't seen him for myself. Peace be with you. Jesus, is it really you? How did, what? Thomas, stop doubting and believe. Look at my hands, my Lord and my God. You believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen and still believe. Thomas knew Jesus. He was friends with Jesus, but he still doubted sometimes. What I love about that story is when Thomas doubted, Jesus didn't leave him. Jesus wasn't mad at him. In fact, Jesus came closer to Thomas. He helped Thomas's faith grow. Jesus helps our faith grow too. So it's okay to have questions? Definitely. Oh, okay, then I have so many questions. Like, where is God? How can he be everywhere? What does God look like? How come I've never heard God talk? What if... Why did God say that it was suddenly okay to eat some animals? And who was the first guy to do that? He was probably looked at kind of weird. And why would he make giraffes? I mean, do they really need a neck that Thomas long? Thomas got to see Jesus. Why can't I see Jesus? That's a good question. 
Do you remember what Jesus said? Uh, blessed are those who have not seen him, but still believe. It's a blessing that I can't see Jesus, but I want to know for sure that he's there. Would that solve all your doubts, seeing Jesus? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. It didn't solve all the disciples' doubts. When Jesus was here, he gave people answers. He taught people about God. He did actual miracles. And do you know what people usually said? What? We want more. Show us more. Do one more thing. Then we'll believe. Then when Jesus did another miracle, what happened? They just wanted another one. Exactly. Even as Jesus rose up into the heavens, it says some of his followers had doubts about him. Really? So we'll always have questions? Yes. But what if having questions isn't the problem? Asking questions and looking for answers helps us get to know Jesus better. And the better we get to know Jesus, the stronger our faith grows. It's a bit like exploring. Imagine your question is like a really big mountain you're trying to climb. Like it takes a lot of work to find answers? It can. Imagine you're climbing this mountain and you're getting really close to the top, closer to the answer for your question. You've climbed and you've climbed, and as you reach the top, it's as if the world opens up before you. And it's so much bigger than you ever imagined. There's so much more to see. So many more questions to ask. So much more to explore. In my experience, that has been what following God is like. Every time I get an answer, it's like reaching the top of a mountain, only to realize there's so much more I get to learn. But it isn't a scary thing or a problem. It's an exciting journey. That's awesome. I've had many doubts. Many times I've questioned God. Some were small questions like, where is God? What does he look like? Some were real doubts, like, is God good? Will God really be there for me? What did you do when you doubted? Eventually, I realized I had everything I needed for this journey already. I had a Bible to teach me about God. I had a church where I found others who had the same questions I did. And no matter what, God kept drawing nearer to me, just like Jesus did for Thomas. And I realized God has all the answers already, and he loves me, no matter how many doubts I have. So it's not about getting all of the answers. It's about getting to know God? I believe so. And every time I find an answer, I learn God is so much more amazing than I thought. So it's like training. Oh, I can do training. That makes sense. Yeah. And if asking questions can help us grow, then I'm so ready to learn more. <laughs> Bring it on, Doubt Detector. <sighs> doubt Detected. It's time for an adventure. Let's find some answers. Together. <laughs>